Vanagon versus GMC Safari, all-wheel drive. Which one's the best camper? Let's start with the Vanagon. It's a 1990 Carat. One of the more desirable Vanagon models produced. It was built from 1989 to 1991. It's fully loaded. It has air conditioning, power windows, power mirrors, power steering, power brakes, keyless entry. Still running the original 2.1 with an automatic transmission. It has 175,000 miles on it. These vans are becoming more and more collectible. And in this type of condition, with a restoration and all the mechanicals gone through, this van is probably going to set you back $20,000. And it's going to be difficult to find one. There are not that many of them left. It can be a very reliable vehicle. It's correctly maintained. It gets about 18 miles to the gallon. Here we have a 2002 GMC Safari. It's also sold as a Chevy Astro. This has a 4.3 liter Vortec, backed up by an automatic transmission. It's also fully loaded, power steering, power brakes, power windows, power mirrors, keyless entry and air conditioning, cruise control. This one is also an all-wheel drive. These are built on a truck chassis and have a 5,000 pound tow capacity. They are more available as they were built from 1995 to 2005. However, the price point, particularly for the all-wheel drives, is increasing. Probably looking at around $12,000 for a low mileage, excellent condition vehicle. And it will take some time to find one. They get around 18 miles to the gallon also. Um, they're quite easy to modify. This one has a 2 inch lift and is running larger 235, 75 R15s for more ground clearance. Really, these are a great platform for a small camper van. Go over some of the Vanagon camper features. Although it does come with a rear bench that converts into a queen size bed and a fold up interior table, we've actually spent about another $5,000 to uh, make this into more of a long term camper. We added a large roof box and a hard sided awning. Flexible solar panel on the roof. We move to the interior. We have replaced one of the jump seats with a removable kitchen unit. Holds five gallons of fresh water, has an electric water pump. The stove can be used either inside or outside the van. We have one of the original jump seats, which has a storage drawer built underneath, a 12 volt Dometic compressor cooler that runs off the house battery. It's our folding table, the rear bench, which folds down into a queen size bed. Under the seat, we have our house battery, a solar controller, and a diesel parking heater for those chilly nights. Also installed a full curtain package and some LED reading lights in the rear. Overall, quite a comfortable camper. Let's take a look at the camper conversion on the Safari. We have 200 watt flexible solar panels mounted to the roof. Once again, a roof storage box, and this time a soft-sided awning. 
The roof box has been color matched to the vehicle. Moving to the interior, we have a swivel front seat. Underneath the driver's seat, we have a diesel parking heater. Kitchen cabinet, we have full extension drawers and the under sink cabinet can be converted to a table, which is really quite convenient. Have a portable stove for use in the van or outside. Moving towards the rear, we have a 12 volt compressor fridge, which is powered by the house battery, which is charged when the car is running or by the solar controller and power station. The couch has storage underneath and easily converts into a bed. Simply a pull and flip. And we have the bed. Rear cabinet also supplied the van with some thermal shades that simply fit into the window area. Moving towards the rear, we have the rear storage cabinet. And a lot of storage under the bed platform, which is also where the house battery lives. So which is better, the Vanagon or the Safari? Well, the Vanagon is cool. It has a huge bed. It's fun to drive and it's appreciating in value. There is a little more maintenance involved, but these fans are extremely reliable if they are properly maintained. For the fun factor, probably the Vanagon. The Safari, in many ways, is just a better vehicle. It has a modern powertrain, has airbags, has analog brakes. It's all-wheel drive. They're durable and reliable, and they're fairly available. This one has a high-end conversion. It costs about $12,000 to put all the bits and pieces together. Not 100% required. These make a great camper van with just a simple conversion. Anyway, really, it's up to you to decide. What do you like better, Safari or Vanagon?